Hi, Movie Edit Pro Plus and Premium come with numerous movie templates with various themes and lengths, from 30 seconds to 2 minutes. These are great for quickly making short movies complete with music. In this tutorial, we'll look at how to use a template, how to convert it onto the timeline for more detailed editing, and a few quick tips and tricks. Before we get started, just to refresh some of the important points from my tutorial on getting started in MEP, make sure that you've downloaded and installed the extra content and updated to the latest version. Look for these under the top Help menu. Also make sure that your program settings are the way you want. I'm going to use the term MEP rather than saying Movie Edit Pro each time. I'm also using MEP 2016 Premium, but the more recent version is about the same. Prior to MEP 2016, movie templates could be opened from the start screen. No more. To find them, start up a new project. I'll call this project My Dogs. Under the Media Pool, click on Movie Templates, and you'll see many of them, and some subfolders divided into lengths. You can preview a template by hovering over the icon and selecting the Play button, and a short preview will play. I'm going to use the template called Pets, which is only about one minute long. Press on the down arrow on the icon to insert the template into your project. Let's face it, family and friends don't want to see an epic movie about your dog, but they can probably live with a minute of Fido. When you open a template, the interface changes to a storyboard type model, complete with an intro, an outro, placeholders for photos and images, proposed text and music. Your job is to provide titles and content. Before starting, I'll change the name of the movie, not the project, to Bernadette. Right click on the movie tab, select rename and type in a new name. OK. At the beginning of this template, we need a title. Click on the text placeholder and type in a title in the box at the right hand window. I'll replace the stock text with Bernadette. You can't see it right away in the preview monitor, so scroll a bit by dragging the playback marker. That's the arrow. While we're here, if you can't see the jog wheel, click on the three bars to open the menu and turn it on. If you still can't see it, it's because the monitor window is too small. Drag the right side of the window to the right a bit. Now, there, we can see the jog wheel. And we see the text. Now for the content. But first, let's look at those placeholders. They give an indication of the length, and they propose the type of content to use, like a text, long shot, action, close up, group shot, etc. If you click on a placeholder, look at the right hand window and the text indicates the type of shot expected. You're free to do whatever you want, but you can't change the durations. The durations of the videos are approximate and not exact as we'll soon see. I've already placed some photos and video clips in a folder and I'll navigate to the folder in the media pool. To start this off, let's import a photo of Bernadette. First, select the placeholder and then select an image or video and either click on the insert arrow or drag the clip from the media pool onto the placeholder. Next I'll import a video clip, but this time I won't select the placeholder. I'll just drag the clip onto the placeholder that I want. This placeholder indicates only one second, but the imported clip is longer. Look at the box at the right. There's a window showing the part of the video that will be seen. At the top left of the window, we see 0 seconds, 0 frames, then 1 second, 23 frames, and again 1 second, 23 frames. So the clip is inserted with a start shown at the beginning. We want to show the action that's part way along the video. Holding down the left mouse button, drag the video to the left. The counters change showing where you are in the clip. Watch the preview monitor. You see the starting image of the video, and you also see that same image in the storyboard image. Stop when you have the beginning that you want. Now go back and preview this in the preview monitor. Drag the playback marker to the left and press play. If that's what you want, move on. If not, slide the video to a new starting point. Well, what if you don't like it at all? Simply choose another video clip or image and drag it on top and the object will be changed. Now, sliding a long video clip in this little window is not very convenient. There's another way to do this. Select the video clip in the media pool 
and click on the preview button. The video starts to play in the preview monitor. I'll stop it. We can see that this clip is about 22 seconds long. Either play the video until it gets to where you want, or drag the playback marker to where you want, or both. Use the jog wheel to fine tune. Once you have the playback marker at the desired frame, click on the left range marker and holding down the left mouse button, drag the image from the monitor down onto the placeholder. Look at the right hand window and we see the correct image. Look at the left time indicator and we see that it matches the one in the upper left of the preview monitor. Of course, you can still modify this. Another note here, if the video clip selected is shorter than the placeholder duration, the clip will be rejected and you'll have to select another one. This can also happen if the starting point that you selected is too close to the end of the video clip. The next placeholder is text and some is proposed. Delete or type over the text. Note that you can't modify the font, the font size or color, only the text. At any time, you can press on play or the spacebar to play back what you've done so far. And again, you can drag the playback marker left and right to where you want and you can see the result in the preview monitor. Continue importing your content. If you happen to have your photos or videos nicely lined up, you can select the ones that you want by holding down the control key and selecting multiple objects from the media pool. Then release the control key and the mouse button, then with the mouse over one of the selected images, press and hold the left mouse button and drag the object down towards the bottom. You'll see a large message come up to drop the selected media here. Do so. All of the objects will be placed on the placeholders in the order that they appear in the media pool, not necessarily the order that you selected them. You can do this multiple times until all of the placeholders have images or videos. Go back and change them as you wish. Don't forget to save occasionally. Once done, move the playback marker to the beginning and play back your project. Notice that some of the slides have pan or zoom effects. Do some last fine tuning. Make sure that you have modified all of the text. Finished. Now you can export the movie to an MP4 or WMV or another file format or you can switch to the burn screen to burn a DVD. Of course, a one minute video would be a waste of a DVD. Now, I had another dog and I want to create a similar movie in the same project. Easy. Go back to Import, Movie Templates, and select the same template, or another one, by double clicking on it or pressing on the Insert button. A message will pop up indicating that the movie is still open and would you like to close it? Select Don't Close. This will open a second movie in the project. Right click on the name of the movie and select Rename Movie. I'll change this one to Dahlia. I'll go through the same process, title, import content, edit, etc. Once done, I can export the Dahlia movie to an MP4 or WMV, or now I can go to Burn and I have two movies of a minute each. Still a waste of a DVD. Now if I had 30 dogs, I could keep going this way. I'll switch back to the Bernadette movie. Well, I don't like the font or the color of the title, and I don't like some of the effects, and I want to add some effects. And I want to change the song. So what to do? First I'll save the project, and then do a Save As, and give it a new name. There's a check mark button at the upper right to manually edit the template. Click on it. A warning message pops up telling you that you cannot return to the movie template wizard. If you're sure that you want to do this, then select yes. Remember, we saved the original project with a different name, so we can always go back. Map now switches to storyboard mode, and you have access to the other editing tabs, fades, title, and effects in the media pool. Since we want to do detailed editing, switch to Timeline mode. Now we see all of our objects and we have access to all of the editing tools. And we can make an epic one-hour movie of Bernadette to bore our friends and relatives. Now let's look at a trick that we can do. Instead of going out of the wizard, maybe we can just keep the movie done by the wizard as is, but add in another movie to make the epic adventures of Bernadette. 
I can reopen the other version that we saved before, but I won't bother for now. I'll click on the Add Movie button, that's the plus sign, and rename the title to Bernadette the Long Version. Now I have to build the movie myself, but I want a few of the elements from the short version. Since I put the short version on the timeline for the Bernadette movie, I can simply click on the movie and select the objects that I want, select Copy or Control c go back to the long version movie, and do a paste. Now I can change the font, text, whatever I want. But what if I was still in the wizard mode, like I am with the Dahlia movie? These elements all had to come from somewhere, and you can find them in the program data, or take a look at where you keep the map project files. A folder called pet has been created, and under it we see pet.ogg, which is the music, and several mp4 files. These are the ones that you saw at various points in the short movie. You can drag and use any of these in your long version. There are other files, but they're beyond the scope of this tutorial. If you happen to have Movie Edit Pro 2015, then you have a problem. There's no apparent way to get the wizard movie onto the timeline, but actually there is a way. In the wizard movie of MEP 2015, type Ctrl-Alt-L on the keyboard and export the project as an MVD file. Then open a new project, click on the arrow beside the name of the movie, and select Add Movie. Import the MVD file that you just saved. And when it comes on the screen, you have to accept this, and it should open up in storyboard mode. Now you can switch it to timeline mode and edit it. And you can just delete the default movie that opened up here. A final note, it's a good idea to adjust the quality of your photos with a photo editor before using them in MEP. I hope that this tutorial has helped you understand how to use movie templates and modify the results. So get going and make some short adventure movies. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. Bernadette, depuis que je t'ai trouvé, tu remplis ma vie avec tes folies. Dans le bois, tu chasses les écureuils, tu joues avec les chats, t'amènes de